Hey everyone, here's Cottony Art, and today I will be coloring this Starfire Blanc cover commission with Copic markers. I will guide you through my usual process and try to explain some of the choices I make. I did the line art with normal small brushes and dip pens using the liter black ink 4. I've chosen this specific ink because it is alcohol based marker proof. You should pay attention what kind of ink you can use because waterproof doesn't mean copic proof. There are other brands that are suitable to work with markers as well. You can find some articles in internet with different ink comparison and pick one that is right for you. Better be sure and check the ink before you start your piece. At least try it out on some smear paper. In my case, I learned it the hard way and before I searched for the right ink, I ruined a few of my commission works. But even using now the liter ink, to be even more certain that I will not have any smears on my work, after inking is finished, I let the piece dry overnight. And by the way, the high resolution of this line art and some other rewards are in this month back on my Patreon. If you want to practice coloring, feel free to use my lines and it will be also awesome to see the result. So don't forget to share it on Instagram with hashtag coloringcotton. Before I go to the action, I put some piece of paper that I don't need under the surface I work on. So the pages underneath are safe and don't get any marker stains. And uh, the end of the paper that is sticking out is good to use as a palette if I need to test some strokes or colors. I also have a copy color marker chart in front of me while I am working. The reason why I don't rely on colors that have marker caps is because they usually don't match with the actual color that comes out on paper. And I don't want to have any bad surprises in my piece. At this point I usually just start to color, but this time I wanted to do something different and step up my traditional coloring. So I did a color thumbnail first in Photoshop. Because working digitally allows me to have more freedom to experiment, try new things and always be able to take a step back if I made a wrong decision. With traditional media I need to be more careful and there is no way back when the color is already on paper. I have a thumbnail and some reference pictures in front of me open on my laptop and I can start with coloring now. Here I'm trying out uh, which markers I want to use for the skin color. Um, now coming a little back, I think making these color thumbnails can also help you to overcome a fear to fail because you already have a direction that you can just follow without figuring it out on the paper. I wish I came out with this thumbnail idea a bit earlier for me because there was a time when I was procrastinating and not starting a commission piece for days just because I was afraid to make a mistake and not to have a perfect result. What is per se another big topic and obstacle that holds back a lot of artists. Willing to make things perfect was a big issue of mine and I'm very happy that I can finally turn it off and just keep doing full finished projects and illustrations. What is way more important than try forever make something perfect and not get anything done. Here I start with the lightest color and blend it using colorless blender with white space that I leave uncovered to show the skin glow on the high points of the body. Uh, for the pace uh, this will be usually in the middle of a forehead, on the nose plane and cheekbones. Then with darker color I go over the areas where the shadow should fall and blend it with previous lighter color. And that is basically the whole technique that I'm using when I color with Copics. 
because it's easy to build up darker color over a few steps, but it's not possible to go from dark to light. And to choose a right place for shadow, I imagine from which side the light is coming and how would forms that I have in my figure react to this light. For me now it's even more easier because I have a color thumbnail in front of me where I already made these de decisions beforehand. Here I realized that I forgot to draw the bluish reflected light on the face and actually I should have started with it. Um, good that skin color is still very light and I can go over with light blue marker and fix my mistake. I'm not trying to color exactly the same way that I did in my thumbnail, but to have it more like a crit note where I have the right answers on questions I usually make while drawing. For example, where to put shadows, where are the highlights, which color has a shadow, uh, where's reflected light and so on. After I put the reflected light, I keep coloring the skin tone using the same technique that I've used for the face. As soon as I started to work on this piece, I realized that uh, this type of paper on this blank cover book doesn't work well with Copics. Paper sucks a lot of ink, making blending harder as usual, and colors appear duller as they actually are. But at this point I can't do anything about it but to try make it work and building the color brightness I need with more layers and maybe with color pencils at the end. I don't like to stick to only one media, so I often use color pencils over my Copic drawings to give more texture, extra strokes, to darken colors or to point out some details. The important thing here is to use pencils after the Copic coloring is done because Copic ink won't lay well on top of the pencils. As you can see here, I am going over and over again, building up darker tones of the skin.
If you don't know how to render the body, where the muscles are or how they are highlighted, just use some references. Find a photo with similar pose that your character has or better make a photo of yourself in the exact same position or of your sister, your girlfriend, brother, whoever you can find. Don't let the poor knowledge of anatomy to keep you away from drawing. Our knowledge comes with time, practice and repetition. You may need a photo reference to draw an eye for the next 50 times, but 51st time you can just do it from your head. Or maybe you will need just 40 or 30 times. Just try it. After the skin is finished, I start to build up nice color gradient on her hair. And as before, I use the lighter colors to make a base first and only after I will add some shadows. I also keep on rotating my canvas a lot to make it more comfortable to make more confident strokes that I usually happen to be in one direction when I'm drawing from me um, and when I rotate my drawing I sometimes have to think about the kindergarten where I was because they used to teach us that to rotate a paper while you're drawing is wrong, like really wrong and it was banned. Or I also had teacher at my primary school, she would always lower the note if the background wasn't painted. Like even if the character or whatever you drew was awesome and you could get like thousands of likes with it on art station, but it was of course not possible at the time because there was no internet yet. Um, if the background stays white, you will never get an A. Then I just started to draw my usual things on green tinted paper and it worked. Like no white background, okay, here you have an A. And this still wonders me and I still don't like to draw the backgrounds. I also want to say a big thank you again to my patrons that are supporting me and helping so the content and tutorials I produce stay sustainable.
To make this glowy thingy I first make very light the outlines with similar pencil, pencil color so you can see the strokes after. Now it comes to one of my favorite parts and that is adding finishing touches and additional color and shadows later and to brighten up the highlights I'm using white gel ball pen from Pentel that just happened to be in my local chancery store Sometimes there's a need to do something lighter to define a depth uh, on the picture and for that I'm using a soft white pencil, in this case pastel pencil from Faber-Castell. I can even lighten the line art with it if I need because things that are on the background are lighter and duller than on the foreground. And that's it, the piece is finished. Um, subscribe to my channel guys to stay tuned. I try to upload for now at least one video a month, but I plan to produce more content for you in the future. And for all my watchers uh, that actually speak Russian, you better check out my second channel, Cottony Art Ru, where I upload videos with Russian over voice. Check out my social media accounts and let me know which topics can be interesting for you as well and what else I can film and show you guys. Stay awesome and see you next time. Because working digi digitally. Because working digi digital.
because working digitally, 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 working digitally. There was a time when I was alone, nowhere to go and no place to call home. My only friend was the man in the moon, and even sometimes he would go away too.